Dream vision of the final day. Welcome beloved. Kindly subscribe if you have not to join our happy Christian family. If you do appreciate this channel, then send your support through the details in description below. Hello my name is Benjamin Martin. I am married, the father of three residing in the city of Brasilia Federal District in Brazil. I am a member of the Assembly of God from Brasilia whose president is Pastor Pereira Xavier. I want to report with great fear and trembling the vision that God through his infinite mercy has bestowed on me his servant. It was in the dawn on the 17th of March 2017 from Friday to Saturday. I experienced the greatest and the most distressing experience of my life in God. In my 44 years of Christian life I have never experienced something like that. I hope that whoever has the opportunity to hear this, report and share with his neighboring friends and relatives so they may have the return of Jesus in their minds and many who are sleeping can wake up for heaven and hell are real. Likewise the coming of the Messiah that is approaching we must prepare ourselves to live with the Lord in eternity. It is written in the book of Matthew 24 36-38 But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 37 But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 38 For as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Brothers, I want to tell you the dream that God gave me. It was a vision of doomsday, things that are going to happen. As my custom was, I prepared myself to sleep around midnight and 30 minutes. I wished my wife good night and soon I fell asleep. Then I had a dream of the final judgment. It is a vision of the great and terrible day of the Lord where everyone will be accountable before him. In the dream I was in my room at home watching television when I suddenly started to hear bangs like earthquakes and I was scared and haunted by those sounds that were getting louder and louder. Then I heard sirens ringing and also the screams of people. When I went out I saw ships, planes, and helicopters. It was a scenario of apocalypse. I stood up and I was desperate. In view of this, I put my hand on the head. I started to cry saying, the Lord has come back and I am left behind. Now, what is going to happen to my life? In that confusion I got back inside when suddenly the heaven opened above the living room of my house where I was and Jesus appeared in the clouds. The Bible says in Revelation 1, 7, all eyes shall see him, even those who pierced him. I looked at him and in the blink of an eye, he disappeared. Quickly I was transported to a place where there was a line of people as far as the eyes can see. The whole world was gathering in this place for I saw people of all nations and all races and all tribes there. I was in shock and scared and troubled. It was a scene from apocalypse. Soon I realized that this was the final judgment and we were on the final day. There were no big or small neither poor nor white nor black people for they were all the same before the Lord Jesus. A whirlwind of feelings took over me and those people who found themselves before the white throne. I saw the countless multitude of all nations and colors. Many were crying, many regretting why they were not faithful. When I realized the magnitude of these things I started to cry and regret. Isaiah 13, 4-6 The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts musters the host of the battle. 5 They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole land. 6 Howl you, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. On that day I began to remember that often I was not faithful to the Lord and I deceived my employees. I remembered how often I caused trouble with my wife. There among the nations of the earth, many people were lamenting and saying, why didn't I forgive my brother? Others said, I did not reach out to the needy. Why was I not a better person? I didn't love my neighbor the way the Lord Jesus taught us. Others said, why didn't I believe the gospel when I received the pamphlets talking about Jesus coming for the destruction of the beast and the antichrist? Why did I not believe the evangelist who preached the good news? Now I'm here. There was a tremendous clamor and uproar in that place where the nations of the earth were all gathered together before the white throne. There was an atmosphere of sadness even before being judged. I saw even children who disobeyed their parents and the people who committed all kinds of atrocities in their lives such as killing, stealing, and destroying. There was a sense of panic here. God brought to my heart the understanding that the countless multitudes were all of humanity since the world was founded. 
They were all here in this place. This was terrible and mind-boggling. I didn't want to be here but there was no way to escape. There was no way you could be close to being judged and wanting to go back to the end of the line. There was no way to cheat and you had nothing to say to escape and nowhere to escape. The judgment was unavoidable. I wanted to get out of that place for I was terrified. I wanted to run away and get somewhere I don't know but I didn't want to be there but I had nowhere to go but to wait for my turn to come face to face with Jesus. I looked and saw Jesus in the resplendent white robe. I could not see his face for his glory. I saw the radiance of his majesty and his power. A mix of feelings took over my heart. I was proud and happy to be so close to Jesus. Imagine I am here next to the master the king of kings the one whom I loved so much and I dedicated my life but at the same time, I was about to be judged. There were only two people in front of me. Right after them, it would be my turn. I started to think what to say to the Lord, I sang for you. I visited the hospitals. I did charity works. I preached and I taught people to play instruments for over 30 years. I dedicated myself to your work. When I was thinking like that, the man that was before me stepped forward for his turn came. He was called and he stood before the throne. Jesus called his name and the book was opened in the hands of Jesus. He asked the man, what have you done with your life? The man started to explain and said, Lord, I distribute to the poor on Christmas. I helped people. I visited shelters. Jesus interrupted him and said, here nobody can deceive me and here there's no father no mother no pastor and no friends and all the attitudes and actions of humanity are in this book. Behold I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. How many times have I told you not to go right not go to left and to avoid going the wrong way and you didn't listen to me. Then that man started to cry and he said, Lord, I cared about people when I was on the earth. Have mercy on me. Jesus told him, the price was paid for the redemption and the time of grace ended. The door is closed and there's nothing else I can do for you. The man was crying in a desperate way and said, Jesus have mercy on me. Jesus said to him, behold your name is not in the book of life. You have no place in the celestial mansions in my father's city. When the Lord spoke, that man screamed desperately but Jesus had nothing else to do and he was cast into the lake of fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels where there was only the gnashing of teeth and weeping. It was terrible. Behold my turn came and I was face to face with Jesus. Beloved brother when I stood before the Lord my heartbeat was felt in every part of my body in my anguish. I cried a lot and my whole life passed before me. I thought this is it. There's nothing to say now. What remains is to wait and discover the fate of my destiny and the judgment of God. That's when Jesus called me by my name and said, Benjamin. Immediately I lifted my head that was bowed and I didn't manage to look in his eyes. Jesus showed me the cross and asked me, what does the cross mean to you? I said, the cross means salvation. It means redemption and forgiveness of the sins of humanity. Then I lowered the head and I waited in anguish. Jesus said to me, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the gate of heaven opened for me. When I entered that place I heard the sound of festive joy and adoration of God's people running from side to side and hugging one another. I met friends and people who were happy. Words cannot describe the glory of that place. There is nothing that I can say to try to express celestial felicity and joy I felt there in the heavenly world. Everything was a party and a celebration. It was all joy and peace and I said, Holy, holy is Lord of armies, he who loved me, he who has saved me. I was in a glorified body and sanctified white robes. I sang in a celestial choir. Then I woke up about half past four in the morning feeling everything that I experienced. It was so real that I got confused and I started to cry. I thanked God because I still have a chance to improve what I need to improve. God spoke clearly to my heart that I need to take this message wherever I went. This revelation is clear. Jesus is coming back. Jesus will soon return. We don't know the day or the hour but it will happen. Then I related the dream to my wife telling everything that had happened and how I was feeling and she was also touched and she cried a lot. God clearly said to me, wherever you are, announce the coming of Jesus. Unfortunately, we live a time where people often preach about prosperity. Brother and sister, our destiny is not here on earth. Our future is not in hell. 
Our promise is to live with the king and to reign with him forever.